Hello, this is Amjad Al Mandilawi from Baghdad, Iraq, presenting the second series of PCI in bifurcation. At this presentation, we will show various scenarios for provisional stenting. Provisional stenting is basically a one stented strategy, and it involves stenting of the main vessel followed by side branch intervention and stenting if necessary. The first case is a 59-year-old male who is hypertensive and smoker, not diabetic, with a stable angina. This is a picodal view of the left coronary artery. It shows a distal left meniscus lesion with a critical lesion at the ostium of the LID. The lesion is extending to the mid part of the LID as shown in this cranial view. The less circumflex is continuous with a large OM and it appears to be free of disease and the classification is basically Medina 110. This is the spider review, it shows the same thing. Predilatation of the LED left main stem was needed. A stent was deployed at the mid LED. The stent balloon was pulled back and inflated proximally for further dilatation of the osseum of this LID. Then a stent was chosen to cover the LID and all the way back to the osseum of the left main stem. It was 3.5 by 40 millimeter. Now an important thing in all bifurcation stenting is to choose the right size of the stent. And this involves both the diameter and the length of the stent. The diameter of the stent should, should be chosen according to the size of the distal main vessel. Here a diagram shows a bifurcated artery. So if this is the proximal main vessel and this is the distal main vessel and the stent is deployed across the side branch from distal to the proximal, then the diameter of the stent should match the size of the distal main vessel. This is because if the stent was chosen according to the larger proximal vessel, then distally there will be mismatch as shown in this diagram, and it may result in barotrauma or edge dissection and even perforation. When there is a size mismatch between the proximal and distal main vessel, which is the usual scenario, then the proximal part of the stent can always be post dilated to match the size of the proximal main vessel. And here comes the importance of knowing the maximum limit each stent design can reach with post dilatation. And there are charts that shows the maximum limit of each stent. Now we come to the second important point about stent size, which is the length of the stent. There are two important points to be taken into consideration. The first is that the stent length should be long enough to, co to cover the lesion, and this is obvious. The second one is that there should be enough length proximal to the carina for post dilatation or for pot. This is because if your stent was shorter than the balloon used for pot, then the balloon will be inflated at the raw area and this can cause injury to the vessel. So in summary, the stent diameter should be selected according to the distal vessel and the stent length should be enough to cover the lesion and to allow for pot. Going back to the case, a stent size with a diameter of 3.5 that matched the LID size, but it's clear that it is undersized for the left main stem. Now we need to do two things. Since the left circumflex ostium is significantly pinched, pinched a recrossing and dilatation is needed. The other thing is post dilatation of the proximal stent to match the size of the left main stem. Recrossing to the side branch 
with an underexpanded stent carries the risk of going beneath the strut of the stent. So if you are not sure, initial pot is important before recrossing. And that was done in our case, an uncompliant balloon, 4.5 by 8 was inflated in the left main stem, proximal to the carina. Now we can do recrossing and it is best done through the distal cells. And to do, to do that, you can pull back the wire of the main vessel and aim at the distal cell, cells to cross to the side branch. You can take a third wire, and in this case, it's better to push the wire distally and then pull it back to recross. Why is it better to recross through the distal strut cells? This figure shows that a crossing through the distal cells will provide better scaffolding of the side branch ostium when kissing, kissing inflation is done while a proximal cell crossing will result in pushing the stent stress toward the main vessel. Kissing inflation was done in both vessels in our case. Final pot again with non-compliant balloon was done. And this is the final result. There was no need to put a stent in the side branch. Another scenario in a similar case, we can see a distal left main stem with subtotal occlusion of the LID. The lesion was predilated and the stent was deployed to the LID from the LID to the left main stem. Recrossing was done. The import with a larger NC balloon. It's important to put the balloon just proximal to the carina to avoid damage and shifting of the carina. And in this case, side branch seems to be okay and kissing inflation was not needed. And a third scenario, in this case, after finishing LID left main stem stenting, a mid LID diagonal lesion became apparent probably due to plaque shift. So both the branches were wired and the stent deployed in the main vessel, which is the LID the stent deployed and inflated to a higher pressure. And this is the result, which seems to be good, but the patient had chest pain. It is important to have a better look at the ostium of the side branch, which is here the diagonal. A straight AP cranial view does not show the ostium of the diagonal, and an LIO projection is needed. This is aliocranial view, view. It clearly shows the ostium of the diagonal. It is affected, and this diagonal is a large branch. Inflation of the diagonal was not useful in relieving the chest pain of the patient, so we had to stent it. And in this situation, a tap technique is a good option. Another option is to use reverse crush or keelot. And this is the final result. So in summary, whenever you face a bifurcation lesion, few questions have to be answered. The first is about the side branch, whether it needs to be preserved or not. If no need to be preserved, then we treat as the main branch only. If the side branch needs to be preserved, then the other question is about the likelihood of occlusion of the side branch. If the likelihood of a closure of the side branch is high, then you may choose a two-stent technique from the beginning. If the likelihood of occlusion is low, then we go for a provisional stenting, which is the aim of this presentation. And this involves stenting the main branch with the protection of the side branch by a wire. If the side branch, then we ask whether the side branch is compromised or not. If it's not compromised, then the case is finished. If the side branch is compromised, then we do balloon angioplasty. If it was successful, the case is finished. If it failed, then a two-stand technique is used. And thank you.